The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the, for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called, called Jesus, Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who was called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor said to them, which of the two do you want to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to the cru crucified, to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him, put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and marched him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him, they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golthaga, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right, and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their hands, heads and saying, you, who would be destroyed the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same ways. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabbathani, 
deathbed is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion, those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Shalom, Aslam Malinkum. Aslam. Kai ek kyrios methanon. Please be seated. If you find it disturbing that we had so much joy in the streets, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? And then you find yourself in here listening to the crucifixion story, a story that is rife with betrayal, with suffering, with agony, and yes, with faith, and yet hopefulness. Then you're beginning to understand what this is all about. My notes. Don't use them often, but when I use them, I need them. So the betrayal begins with the people. They celebrate this Messiah figure entering into Jerusalem. They are convinced that this person, this God, will overthrow the Roman oppression and will set Judea once again as a light upon the hill, a holy nation with rabbis and priests doing holy things, and that all of those would be driven out, and that this light into the nation would eventually become the nation of all humanity. Then he gets on a small horse or perhaps a donkey, and he's not quite what's expected. He has no swords, he has no shield. How is he going to overthrow the Roman oppressors? Because he is a revolutionary, and indeed he is. He is a revolutionary, but not the God that you and I try to put in a box. You see, we're no different than the crowds. We have this expectation of God to do what we want God to do. And I want you to think about that. What we want God to do isn't necessarily what's best for humanity or even best for our own souls. I want God to help me win the lottery. <laughs> you laugh. But I know people that bring lottery tickets and put them in a foot of a statue. They're no different than the crowds laying down there. 
their blankets upon the ground or their palm leaves. They have this God in a box sense. And when you put God in a box, you box God in. When you put God in a box in your heart, you box God in. Now, it is the want of many preachers to go into the biology of suffering and crucifixion. And it is fascinating. It's something that I commend you to read. There are many articles about it, and not many of them agree. We can certainly say by the time the cross is put on poor Jesus' shoulders that he has been so traumatized he's close to coma. He's been beaten and scourged and spat upon. And he takes up the cross. But to dwell on the forensics of crucifixion is to begin to drift from the point of the crucifixion. Our gospel writer, we've said before, Matthew, is consistent with his belief that we are Jews and this is Jewish faith and Messiah has come, the Son of God. And so he draws in several bits and pieces of Torah and the prophets throughout this story. Darkness at noon refers to the prophet Amos. 8th chapter, ninth verse. When Jesus is hanging on the cross, you hear that, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Are you interpreting that in context or out of context? We don't know. But what we believe is those are the first words of what we now know as the 22nd Psalm. The 22nd Psalm is the psalm of the suffering servant that is constant and has ultimate belief in God the Savior. And it would make sense that Jesus would say the 22nd Psalm just because we don't hear it in the text. Because you'll remember later, and he utters words again. The suffering servant who has faith in confidence in his God. So Matthew brings the history of Israel and continues it in the crucifixion. We hear the biblical patterns throughout this. You heard that, and it's Matthew is the, the one that's earth-shaking, that there is earthquakes and trembling and the tapestry in the temple is ripped open and the saints of old are rising and in fact going throughout the city that is inspired by a valley of dry bones from Torah from the Hebrew Bible from the shoulders of the ancestors that you and I stand upon now. <clears throat> Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones ends with this, and I will put, a, put my spirit within you. And I will put my spirit within you. Matthew offers us fulfillment of scripture, why? not to tell you the story about a poor rabbi that was so horribly abused, but to tell you the story of hope, even in the midst of darkness, of possibility in the face of death, of hopefulness and justice in the face of horrible injustice, and that is your faith. I give it to you today. Whenever a black man is shot and killed in a car, Jesus is crucified and yet we have hope. 
when migrants find no place to stay to rest their head, and when children are separated from parents and put in cages, Jesus is once again crucified, and yet we have hope in resurrection. When we make God's idols that we know can kill people with that it is a God-given right to own a weapon of mass destruction. Jesus is crucified, and yet we have hope. Amen. Amen. We have hope, as the prophets say, that someday, O oh God, you will reign true, that someday our community will be resurrected that someday a murder board will be torn down because it is no longer relevant. Someday a memorial to the victims of violence, to the victims of Holocaust, to the victims of migrants and gypsies and gay men and women and straight men and women and all the children who are transgender that take their lives every day, someday there will be no need for mourning because justice will rain down upon us. But we cannot wait for that justice because you are the rain. You are the rain, my brothers and sisters, that make crucifixion in society part of our belief because if there is no crucifixion, there cannot be resurrection. Will you be crucified? Will you be crucified and inconvenienced to carry this gospel of justice, this gospel of hope, this gospel that says every human being is precious? Will you carry that cross? Will you work to end those things that provide a platform for suicide and drug addiction? with a giving heart, with an open mind, instead of standing in judgment. Will you walk down the streets today with me in the crucifixion without judgment and see the terrible things that go on in our society? And it's broken streets, yes. It is a lack of trees and communities that create hot spots. It is food deserts. It's a lack of access to reasonable medical care for every human being that lives in this country. It is a shortage of educational opportunity for certain members of our community, our black children, our brown children, our trans children, those who identify as gay or lesbian are somehow sent to the margins. Will you carry that cross as well with me? Amen. And in carrying that cross be the reign of justice that will come down upon this earth. Will you do it? Amen. I believe you will. That means a lot of work and a lot of discomfort. It means you know, we often say speaking truth to justice. I'm tired of hearing that phrase. Amen. How about just speaking truth Amen. and letting the truth be enough? Amen. How about tearing down those <laughs> institutions that prevent us from living the new Eden? that we are promised. It's a lot of work, Amen. and it's scary. Amen. But do not be afraid, as Jesus was not afraid. Amen. Your mantra is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And yet, you are here.
go into the streets, after you eat your crawfish. <laughs> Seriously, that's part of the gospel. Feasting. We do that to celebrate our humanity together. And if you look around, you'll see black and white and brown. Some of y'all can walk, some of y'all can't walk. But I know y'all can eat. Got to have food. Perhaps that crawfish might be the manna from heaven that invites you to have a conversation with those that you might not normally have a conversation with. And then you become the rain. Amen. So siblings, kindred spirits, humans of all stripe be the rain. The rain of justice that comes the final hours of the crucifixion, looking forward to what? Resurrection. Amen.